Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and in this video we're going to do the full review of the Celcon A97i Android phone. This is a budget Android phone from Celcon and uh, the retail price uh, listed on the box is 9499 and there's some confusion regarding the street pricing of this box. In Hyderabad I could find this mobile phone for 7500 but in other states it's close to around 8000 or 8200 and uh, the good thing about this phone is uh, out of the box it comes with ice cream sandwich that's android version 4.4 and uh, let me just open up the screen and the performance is pretty snappy uh, for a budget android phone it hoses a one gigahertz processor and uh, the screen size is four inches let me first go over the physical uh, overview on the top we have this uh, 3.5 mm headphone jack uh, and the power button is uh, situated over here and on this side we have the US micro USB slot that will be used for charging and syncing. Uh, we have an indent over here using which you can easily pry open the back cover and uh, we have nothing over here. The microphone hole is over here actually and on this side we just have the volume rocker and on the back we have a 8 megapixel camera but I'm not impressed about this uh, camera it has some major flaws I'll mention it uh, later on in the video we do have a LED flash and we also have one more microphone over here uh, this might be used for video recording but again I had a problem with video recording on this phone and we have it's just written Celcon over here and we have a opening here for the speakerphone and this is a dual uh, sim GSM Android phone and the back cover actually comes out pretty easily and I would say it comes out very easily so uh, I would uh, be careful uh, because this might get a little bit what do you say uh, easy to come out very quickly and it accepts two sims I'm testing it uh, currently with just one sim card you can also add a micro SD card to the same up to 32 GB and the battery supplied by Celcon is a 1500 milliampere battery and in my testing uh, with just one sim I would say the battery life is average it should uh, be able to last you full one working day without any issues but nothing extraordinary with two sims the battery life I did not test it uh, should be a little bit less also I want to thank Faisal communications for providing this uh, unit for testing I would say the screen quality as you can see with this phone is pretty good it hoses a four inch screen and on the top actually uh, here we have a lot of sensors it does have a what do you say a ambient light sensor it has a front facing VGA camera and it also has a proximity sensor and the earpiece is over here and the earpiece I would say is pretty good uh, I would rate the voice calls at about 9 out of 10 and uh, Moving towards the bottom, uh, I do not get this point why are these manufacturers uh, having these uh, four type of touch type capacitive buttons at the bottom that we generally get with gingerbread phones. Uh, we have this menu button, home, uh, back and the search button and you do get what do you uh, say this multitasking tray. Uh, if you just uh, hold the home button for a while, you get this multitasking tray. And one more thing about the phone is that whenever you touch these uh, bottom buttons you get a haptic feedback and it's good but uh, in a way it's annoying also because I was not able to disable the same and uh, the haptic feedback is pretty uh, what do you say uh, heavy so I feel that they should have given an option to disable the same but sadly I didn't find a way to disable this haptic feedback again uh, as this is a dual sim phone uh, not both the sims are 3g enabled only the first sim is 3g enabled and we get the 3g speeds up to 7.2 mbps and again as you can see the screen quality i would say is pretty good and uh, viewing angles also decent enough it's not an ips great screen but again uh, i was satisfied with the screen quality is and the good thing about the screen is it's pretty bright and even outdoors in sunlight it was uh, legible so that's one nice thing about the screen and moving towards the interface uh, Celcon did modify the layout a little bit but not too much uh, let me show you uh, pull down the app tray and they did add this quick toggles over here that's a nice thing and uh, and this is the app tray and you can access all the apps and widgets here so they did a little bit of customization but not very much they also did modify the lock screen let me show you the same when you unlock you get these four options you can directly go to the camera uh, the phone caller 
or directly to the messages and if you go down you unlock the phone so that's the unlocking uh, mechanism um, I am connected to uh, Wi-Fi now and uh, let me just fire up the browser let's just go to uh, tech2bus.com and in general I found the Wi-Fi performance of this phone to be uh, pretty good it was nice and as you can see it loaded the tech 2 bus uh, website pretty quickly and if I scroll the scrolling also is pretty fast and as you can see and let me just open the story uh, the Micromax 87 uh, review and also the orientation change is pretty quick on this phone for example as you can see it changes the orientation pretty quickly without any issue now I'll just try to load a heavy website like Engadget also typing on the phone was pretty easy because the screen is pretty wide and comfortable and it has loaded the mobile version of Engadget I'm just gonna hit continue again it's loading the mobile version and if you have noticed how quickly it uh, rendered that web page so with the web browsing I found it to be pretty good actually I didn't expect it to be this good but uh, so uh, this is the mobile version let me just go back once more and let's go to the desktop version of this site and I just clicked it and it's loading the full version of Engadget and as you can see it loaded it pretty fine actually and let's try the pinch to zoom gesture now and actually pinch uh, to zoom ge gesture is also pretty good it's pretty smooth I would say uh, as you can see so in terms of web browsing uh, I didn't have any problems with this phone web browsing is pretty good in my opinion so let's get out of this web browser and uh, let me uh, show you the YouTube uh, playback you can easily play YouTube videos also on this phone and um, let me hit the YouTube let me change the orientation and uh, let me go to Geeky Ranjit and let's just select one of the videos let's select this lava video and let me skip this ad and in general uh, uh, I found the YouTube uh, video playback also to be pretty good with this phone no issues and if you see it's in high quality and it's able to play the same without any issues so YouTube playback was also pretty nice with the same and now uh, let me talk about the media playback and uh, this phone can also play decent uh, media playback and to show you the same I'm going to use MX player and I have this transformer trailer that's encoded into 720p and uh, let me try the same let's start over and this phone sports a 1 gigahertz single core processor and it also has a dedicated GPU and uh, and it can play 720p content as you can see uh, but again it does tend to skip a few frames for high bit videos like this I tried a few low bit uh, videos and those were able to play fine but if you want the smoothest playback I would suggest that uh, you restrict the video playback to 480p but it is uh, much better than other budget oriented phones that I have seen in terms of playing back 720p content let me get out of this and uh, also uh, we do have what do you say the front facing camera on this phone and uh, this phone does support video calling and I tried video calling and I was able to make video calls but again as the front facing camera is just a VGA one uh, the I was able to see uh, the make the video calls work but the picture was a little bit fuzzy uh, but video calling is there if you are someone who likes that now let me show you the speaker uh, quality 
and I'll just put it on the speaker phone. And as you can see, uh, the speaker is pretty loud and so you can use this phone uh, on the speaker phone without any issues. Now uh, moving to the camera, the rear facing camera is an 8 megapixel one but I have one huge problem with the same. Uh, let me talk about it later on. Uh, the good thing is uh, the camera interface is pretty good and we do get this touch to focus functionality so you just can just click on the same and it quickly does focus and that it took the snap so that's uh, for that and we do get a lot of options actually here so that's nice but one big con that i faced let me open the camera app again is uh though this is 8 megapixel uh, the big problem i found was the color accuracy it was horrible for example uh this is my desk and as you can see the color of my desk is this and this is what the camera is reproducing and this is happening a lot for uh, many pictures so these are some of the pictures that i've uh, taken with this uh, phone i'll also show uh, them uh, in the full screen so you can get an idea but the color reproduction is really really bad for example uh, green looks pale yellow and uh, red looks violet and this was the problem with the video also so for example um, let me show you one video that i took this is the video that i took but the color accuracy is not that great and one more big con that i found with the video uh, recording is that uh, if i tried to record more than 30 seconds of video footage it was simply not saving I tried it about half a dozen times but then also it didn't work. So uh, I would say that in terms of video recording and the camera, uh, it was a huge disappointment this phone personally because I was expecting it a lot because it says it has an 8 megapixel sensor. Yes, the pictures were uh, fine, pretty sharp but the color accuracy was really bad. So you, you just the same, here are some of the pictures in full screen so that you can get an idea about the camera. This picture was shot outdoors in natural light and as you can see the, uh, the leaves are almost yellow. They should have been green and that's also the case with this picture. It's too much yellow. These were taken in semi-indoor conditions and the flash was fired. And these were shot in my office with complete artificial lighting. Now let me uh, talk. Uh, do a little bit of benchmarking. Um, let's first uh, do the what do you say, Nina Mark test that will uh, test the GPU, and this phone does have a GPU. I did install Nina Mark. Can't find it. Yes, and I had run it earlier, and I got a decent score of about 23, as you can see. Let's run it again and this phone does have a dedicated gpu many people are saying that it does not have a gpu but yes this phone does have a dedicated gpu and i would say uh, what the score i got 23 24 is a decent score for nina mark for such a budget oriented uh, phone you can play a lot of games and i did that i tested uh, dead trigger it ran fine i also tested uh, uh, temple run and that also ran fine and Nina Mark test is almost done. And as you can see, we got a score of 23.2. Let's publish that. And as you can see, uh, the GPU, according to Nina Mark, is Power VR SGX 531. So that's for, and let me also just show you this uh, Temple Run game for now. And it runs fine. Also, the touch sensitivity on this uh, phone was pretty good. No issues with that. And let's play. And as you can see, uh, the sensitivity is pretty nice. So that's for this game. Let me get out. And if you hold this home button, we get this ICS style uh, tray 
and let's kill all the apps unnecessarily running in the background and uh, now uh, this phone does uh, have what do you say 512 mb of ram uh, let me also show you this android system info and as you can see the free ram that we are getting is 231 mb and that's very good this is one more reason that the ui and etc on this phone is also smooth i didn't face any issue because it has ample ram and let me go to the system and let me show you the cpu it says that it's running the processor arm v7 processor revision 10 and uh, the hardware uh, chipset is mt6575 so that's the thing and also the resolution on the screen is also pretty good that is uh, let me just show you the same it's uh, 480 by 800 so it's a four inch screen and it has a very decent resolution and that's why everything is sharp so no problems uh, regarding the screen now let me also uh, show you this multi touch one second where did it go yes multi touch tester and uh, i i was able to register five touch points let me show you the same one two three four five okay so five multi touch points it supports that's very nice and uh, let me just kill this and uh, let me uh, now show you the quadrant benchmark i'm just going to run the full benchmark and i'm just going to skip to the scores directly and it has completed the benchmark so let's look at the scores and it says that our device uh, got a score of 2094 and i would say that's a pretty uh, decent score for a single core one gigahertz processor and the breakup is out of the total 2094 the cpu got a score of 1996 memory 2807 io got 3802 2d got a score of 360 3d got a score of 1505 so that's for the quadrant and let me also show you the internal storage and about uh, the android version out of the box this comes with the android version 4.0.3 and let me just also go to the storage tab and here uh, the storage is divided into two parts the first one has 785 mb and we also have a usb storage of 2 gb so a total st uh, storage of 2.75 gb is available and also you can add a sd micro sd card as i had uh, mentioned earlier so storage will not be an issue with this phone also i tested this phone with a 3g connection and it ran fine without any issues uh, now let me just show you the what do you say uh, though it supports this android style keyboard and it is pretty easy to type and uh, it also works in this la orientation uh, i found one uh, annoying bug is that i could not locate the voice icon that we generally find in ics type phones so that's uh, missing on this phone also let me talk about the front facing camera it's a vga camera but i was able to make 3g video calls with the same and also i tested it with skype video calls and the quality was great i was able to make video calls with the same so the front facing camera works fine on this phone and the quality also is pretty good in my opinion so how do i rate this phone uh, out of the box the good thing about this phone is this four inch uh, screen and this, as you can see the screen quality is also very good that's one good thing uh, overall the phone was also pretty snappy and the performance was pretty good uh, and uh, also in gaming as we have seen uh, it can play quite a few games without any issues and even heavy games like dead trigger played fine on this phone and overall also the phone was pretty snappy with its performance and even in web browsing uh, it was very good so in all this aspect it was very good one big negative with this phone is the camera uh, though the camera was decently sharp i would say it doesn't look like an 8 megapixel but i would say around 5 megapixel but the big problem as i uh, told earlier is the color accuracy it's downright horrible so that's one major con that I have with this phone. Apart from that, I don't have any major issues with this phone. It's a good Android phone on a budget. 
I hope you found this uh, video review helpful. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.